they are with us too. Good morning or good afternoon, I should say, Facebook. And hello to everybody joining on Catch Up on YouTube. Very nice to have you with me today. This is, of course, International World Menopause Day. Yes, got my t-shirt on, posted about it this morning. This, of course, is the amazing Diane Dandybrink, who I hope you are all following. She's been an incredible crusader. Honestly, that woman, she started this amazing petition with change.org called Make Menopause Matters. Uh, and you can sign it. And I put on my Instagram this morning um, what exactly it is, the mandates for it, asking really simple things, nothing complicated, asking for compulsory, mandatory training for all GPs. I mean, you'd think it was fairly obvious, wouldn't you? That all GPs have some basic modern, up-to-date, evidence-based, factual <laughs> menopause training. So that's number one. Number two, that there are menopause policies in place in all the workplaces. You know, every workplace has to have a maternity policy. It probably has to have all sorts of other policies as well that apply to very small minority groups. But every single woman is going to have a menopause. Not every single woman will have a baby. So it's crazy that there is no legislation for this that at least acknowledges that this is a time of life which the majority of women, let's face it, find very difficult in the workplace. There was a study, I think it was conducted by the Balance app, which showed that, or maybe it was figures, government figures, which show that a million people, a million women, have been lost out of the workplace due to menopause symptoms, not being able to cope. I mean, that's a massive number of skills, lost businesses, all of that, that wisdom, that knowledge, let alone, of course, what that means in terms of human suffering and personal cost. You know, what is going on behind the scenes if your symptoms are so bad that you can no longer work? So the impact on family lives, relationships, marriages, you know, all of that. Anyway, we are going to focus, hopefully, on some of the positives because as you know, we have positive vibes only. I do sometimes get on my soapbox and I have a feeling that today might be one of those days, but uh, we are going to be having a good old chat with Rebecca. I'm just going to get her to join me in just one second. Uh, so let me find, I've got lots of comments actually coming in here. Lainey, my lovely, you are on Facebook, aren't you? So thank you very much. I am just on the Google Doc here and it's not giving me the details for today. It's just giving me details um, for menopausal hair, which I don't need. I think we did that last week. So maybe if you can send me an updated link on that, that would be great. In the meantime, let us see if we have Dr. Rebecca. You like my soapbox, do you? Lots of comments going on Instagram. <laughs> oh, I know it's so easy to just get so mad and infuriated, isn't it? But you know, what do they say? Don't get mad, get even, you know? Good morning or good afternoon, Rebecca. Hello, Liz, how are you? <laughs> happy, happy World Menopause Day. Happy World Menopause Day. Now, obviously our friends on Facebook cannot see you, but they can hear you. And it's all about the content, as we know, evidence-based information. And Absolutely. I just love everything that you guys have been doing. So for those of you that don't know Dr. Rebecca Lewis, do you want to just give us a, a quick heads up of who you are and what you do? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, I'm a GP and menopause specialist and I work alongside the amazing Louise Newson, who really has transformed menopause care um, over the last four years. She's got us all talking about menopause care. Um, so I'm a director with Louise at Newson Health Clinic and a director of the Free Balance app. I've just um, been joined by Dr. Jeff Foster, who was talking last oh, week yes. with me on my podcast about Hi, the menopause. Hey, Jeff. Oh, yes. Nice to have you with us. Nice to have some more medics in the house. Yeah, Hi, so Jeff. you work on the Balance app as well. And actually, I saw on yeah. her post this morning on Instagram that um, the Balance app is the website has now taken on um, the Menopause Doctor website. Is that right? That's right. Yes, it's all been it's it's become bigger. Um, it's Amazing. more it's slicker and it's been taken over by Balance. But everything's there and it's just going to become even better for women to accessibility and information. Amazing. Global as well. Wherever you know, you're watching this, listening to this yeah. in the world, 
it's global, you can access it. That is one of the wonders of the World Wide Web. We have to remember, WWW, it is worldwide. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, this is an issue that is affecting all women, every single woman, every race, colour, creed, religion, everything. You yeah. can't, can't get away yeah. from it, can you? No, no, absolutely. It's amazing, really, that it's taken this time to sort of get everyone talking about something that affects yeah. 51% of the population. Yeah. It's scandalous, really. I mean, and, and we are smashing taboos and breaking down barriers, because I have to tell you, yeah. you know, when I first started writing about menopause, I was... I was a bit concerned. I was hesitant because yeah. up until yeah. then, you know, to be associated with that word was to be thought of as being past it and decrepit and of no use and unreliable yeah. and, and all of yes. those things. And I'm actually yes. sitting here now in my menopause T-shirt, like loud <laughs> no, and proud. No. Let's talk about this. And of course, it affects young women too. How many, what's the percentage of younger women that go through early That's menopause? Yeah, absolutely. One in a hundred will be under the age of 40 and one in a thousand under the age of 30. Gosh. So one in a hundred is not unusual. And we're seeing that more and more. Thank goodness due to, to good um, cancer care, younger patients receiving good, yeah. good cancer treatments have survived their cancers, but sadly they... Have, have, have caused a menopause. So let, let's talk menopause. about that for those who, who are unaware. What kind of cancers and what kind of treatments then actually put you into a surgical menopause? So um, a key, it's a, called a medical menopause if it's a, a drug, so chemotherapy um, or radiotherapy um, or certain drugs are deliberately given to switch off a woman's ovaries. Gosh, um, so chemo, chemo will shut down your ovaries? It, Chemotherapy often causes, yes, stops your ovaries working. I didn't know that. I thought it was just if you had a hysterectomy and just had your ovaries removed. No, so chemotherapy can damage your, your ovaries. Uh, and that's any kind of cancer that you get Not, chemo for? Yes, and, and different chemotherapies will have different effects. Not all chemotherapy, wow, but some that. chemotherapies that are required. Uh, one of the side effects is to damage the ovary. Um, so would you, if you were on chemo, could you have replacement oestrogen to help get around that? Yeah, often, often, often women can, yes, but they, they don't realise that they can. Um, oh. The vast majority yeah. of, of, of cancers can be safely uh, treated by menopause with, with HRT and replacement therapy. Um, but one of the biggest problems is that women don't realise, number one, they're not really told properly that they're going to go into menopause. So you think so you're feeling rubbish because of the chemo, exactly. and actually so you're feeling rubbish you because you've lost your oestrogen. Exactly that. Exactly that. Um, yes, because you know, chemo brain is a really common common thing where you yeah. get sort of um, you can't get your thoughts right, the word finding difficulties, and we know that this is absolutely typical of the menopause as well. So it's always put down to the side effect of the, of the, of the chemotherapy, or if a woman's feeling low and sad, it's because you, you've gone through a big life changing disease like cancer, yeah. rather than thinking actually this could be the result of lack of hormones. So it's really important to highlight like that for young women going through sure. these treatments that a lot of their symptoms could be due to lack of hormones interesting um, obviously you know we've gone straight in at the sharp end here talking about yeah. cancer and hormone yes. replacement i can see already there's questions on instagram give us the latest lowdown on the risk or non-risk of breast cancer and hrt well, actually, the, the modern type of HRT, the regulated body identical type of HRT, we've actually not had any studies that have shown that there's been an increased risk of breast cancer. It's not to say that there that necessarily is and it isn't an increased risk, but the risk is incredibly low with combined HRT, and that's the one that with progesterone and oestrogen. And the increased risk of breast cancer from the combined HRT, looking at the worst type of HRT. The old-fashioned uh, old kind, fashioned, which actually you don't even get anymore very often. We don't even get anymore. The, the increased risk is less than drinking two units of alcohol, a large glass of wine every night. It is very, very low. Yeah. And some types of HRT, there is no increased no risk, increased of, risk of, of breast cancer. cancer. So women mm. on oestrogen-only HRT, those, yeah. these are women who've had a hysterectomy, they've been followed up for 18 years and they've actually had slightly reduced risk of breast cancer if they're on oestrogen. Do you know, I remember cancer. interviewing Professor Michael Baum, who was the lead yeah. breast cancer oncologist at the Royal Marsden for many, many years and the lead researcher yeah. on tamoxifen. Mm -hmm. who is very vocal on this uh, yeah. and is passionate about getting HRT for women uh, who've been treated for breast cancer ongoing and, and past. Um, and he said in the old days, you know, they used to treat breast cancer with oestrogen. They did. They did because it's got a lot of uh, properties of, of uh, 
because are useful it's anti-inflammatory yeah. um and it, it was thought that actually it could could help breast cancer in the old yeah. days yeah, yeah. so useful. so interesting and of course yeah. anybody interested there's a great book Professor Avram Blooming uh, in the States, who again yeah. is, is kind of like a global giant in terms of oncology, for particularly for breast cancer. Um, he's written a book called Oestrogen Matters, and that is so extraordinarily good. good. And interestingly, both his wife and daughter have uh, or have had breast cancer, and he has prescribed HRT for both of them. It's a really exactly. interesting read, isn't it? It's really good read, and it sets it out so well. Yeah, really it clear. explains all the studies and it yeah. puts it into context. It's a fascinating read, and, and a good read. You don't have to be medical to read it. No. Um, he, put, he explains it so, so well. I, I really you know, urge anyone yeah. who's, who's interested in this to, to have, have a read of that. Definitely. Book. You can find it online. Yeah. Um, it's called Oestrogen Matters, Professor Avram Blooming. Okay, so we're not going to go down the cancer rabbit hole because there's a lot of information out there. And I know, mm. so if people want to go onto the website now, do they go to menopausedoctor.co.uk? Yes, there's a redirection. There's to, a redirect, to, to, okay. To the balance, uh, menopause, because menopause. I remember uh, downloading actually and seeing a number of very good cancer booklets that are available for support that you can download. Absolutely, yes. There's, there's, uh, people who've had breast cancer, people yeah. who've had other types of cancers as well. Yeah, what, really, really fascinating. Them. All free. Yeah. So the last time I think you and I spoke, we were really looking at anxiety. We were. Yeah. And this yeah. is really fascinating because we know that so many midlife women are wrongly mm. prescribed antidepressants mm. for low mm. mood, depression, anxiety, when there's no cl clinical evidence, is there, that, that yeah. antidepressants are going to work in your brain if it's caused by low estrogen? It's not, no, not going to top not. up your estrogen, is it? There's not, and that's nice. Nice guidelines say that actually, the hormone replacement should be used for the symptoms of low mood and the menopause. And people have to yeah. sort of understand what the common sort of symptoms are really. And, and low mood is so common, sure. um, and increased anxiety. And the low mood is sort of like a, a loss of joy, really. Um, women just describe it. Everything is grey. Everything is an enormous effort often feel overwhelmed by everyday things um, and they can't summon up the enthusiasm mm. or the excitement if something mm. happens that's lovely. Uh, they can't feel that inner joy and everything is just grey and it's really hard. Um, I remember you described it because I know you see a lot of women obviously yeah. daily in this situation. Yeah. You described yeah. it as women coming to you saying they just feel flat feel completely flat. Everything is flat, you know, there are, there's no ups and downs and, you know, looking back, I know that, you know, going through yeah. perimenopause in my 40s, that was exactly it and I'd kind of lost my my joy, you know, exactly yeah. that, that word and I think the problem is, is that you become more anxious about things and you can become hyper-focused on, on things so you can become, yeah. you know, really quite paranoid. Yes. Uh, and I think definitely. with today's situation, you know, people are becoming paranoid about what's on the news, the yeah. things that are happening around yeah. us. Yeah. We become yeah. fixated, for example, on the perils of HRT. You know, you could become paranoid about that. And it yes. just takes over. And then it becomes a self-fulfilling cycle because you can't break out of it because of the way that your brain is just shutting out all reason and all evidence-based information and rationality. And yeah, I mean, Jenny here, yeah. who I was with last week, she's saying flat and numb. The anxiety yep. is horrible. Well, I hope, Jenny, I hope you're rubbing on your gel now. It Although is, we will talk it is, about it gel. It is awful. And, and these catastrophizing thoughts. Oh, my God. You know, catastrophizing. Quite, yeah. It's, it's a really good word. It's, um, everyone knows what that means. I've never met a woman who's been through the menopause who hasn't had a degree of increased anxiety. Yeah. And we're all different. So some people don't get it so much, but others are flawed by it. And it's oh. so sad, Liz. You know, people are housebound. They, they can't get out of the house. They are so anxious. They've certainly given up their job. Um, they're not shocking, isn't it? Drive. I mean, it's criminal. This waste of life, mm. this waste of, of human joy and activity yeah. and the yeah. impact. You know, you mentioned there people giving up work and I, I talked about that earlier, you know, the loss to the economy. Mm. But the loss, the impact on broken relationships and, you know, whether they're social friendships or the ability to go yeah. and care for your parents or to properly yeah. care for your children. You know, Absolutely. I used it's to get it. flashes of rage. I mean, it was awful looking back. Awful. Oh, the rage. I, I was incandescent, you know, to, uh, uh, really everyday things that I should not have lost my rag about. 
Um, and, and the anxiety and uh, is, is, can floor women. It's so, so awful. So what is causing um, that physiologically? What's happening well, what in our brain? In the, in, the limbic, in the limbic system, this is the area of the brain to do with our mood, anxiety, libido, concentration and memory. And that's regulated by um, estrogen. It's a right. really vital neurotransmitter, and it's a very important part of our brains. And when we lose estrogen, um, it affects all the other neurotransmitters in a cascade sort of reaction. Oh. So women become more withdrawn. And I think that's another key thing. Women often get withdrawn. They don't want to meet right. their friends. They don't want to go out. It's too much of an effort. So they tend to, to lock down uh, in the comfort of their own home. Even their own family irritate them and, and uh, yeah. upset them quite often. So they just want to be on their own, withdrawing from friends which is the time they need support it's so cruel really they, yeah. they do need this support yeah. um but their bodies are not letting them do that but it's all to do with this change in, in almost personality in the brain Gosh. paranoid sometimes yeah. you know feeling on the edge of paranoia some women can get um and then it is very difficult to, to, to listen rationally. Yeah, when, when you're, you're in, in that mindset. When you're in, it, when you're in that in that mindset, yeah. it's very difficult. Um, and so doing things like this, you know, that I hope can reach women. And, and what you're doing, Liz, is, is fantastic because you, you, we're giving a consistent message to women out there. It needn't be like this. Yeah. There's really good, Trust me, safe, it needn't be like this. Solutions. My life has transformed since yeah. meeting Louise and all of you all those years ago, writing my first book, and I've got can't see it hidden yeah. by lovely flowers but i've got all my menopause books i think i've written five got, books on more, yeah, I, I know more. whenever i come to the clinic brilliant. i see my books brilliant. on your shelf it's like oh yes. my goodness i've made it they're brilliant. They're brilliant. Um, but you know it is about evidence-based information and mm -hmm. of course mm -hmm. you know what we're talking about is so common and i'm always mm -hmm. so saddened when i see in the news you know very often there's a high profile woman who's who's yeah. unfortunately taken her own life and it'll often say, you know, aged 50, age 49, age 52, age 51. And you just want to think, you know, what was going on behind the scenes there? You know, we yeah. know that the average age or the highest um, age of, of a woman experiencing suicide is 51, which is the exactly average age of, of menopause. I mean, it's it, devastating. It, it is devastating. Devastating. In the worst, worst scenario, this sadly does happen. Um, absolutely tragic um yes a lot of people here talking about palpitations we got to stop it um, and we are and we will woman by woman yeah. really important yeah. everyone listening here today you have homework to do today okay absolutely. you need to go out and you need to talk about this you need to share yeah, all the information share the resources if you're particularly clued into anxiety yeah. uh, rebecca and i recorded a podcast specifically on yeah. menopause and anxiety about a year or two ago now I think it was it was beginning of lockdown wasn't it yeah so it was because we were really yeah. you know everyone's yes. anxiety was heightened anyway mm, um, mm, and so right. literally it's the Lizard Wellbeing show just type in anxiety or you know Dr Rebecca Lewis and, and it will come up do please take a listen do please share it because literally at the extreme end it can save lives mm. Yeah, it can. It and can. on the, the, the lower yeah. end, Life it's changing. definitely going to change Brothers. lives, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. And your future health, of course, not only your quality of life, because yeah. we're all different how, how, how severe the symptoms are, but 80% of us will certainly have significant symptoms. Yeah. Well, I'd, um, I'd like to come on and talk about health, health benefits in just a moment, mm. but just to cover off some of the other symptoms, people are mm. talking here about um, heart palpitations. I yeah. know so many girlfriends who've been sent off for ECGs and cardiograms and all sorts of expensive heart yeah. scans and actually yeah. a bit of estrogen gel and, and their heart regulates. Why do we get a, a racing heart because well, affects, of estrogen? Yeah, it affects, I mean, again, every single cell in our body has an estrogen receptor on. Every on cell in our body? Every single cell. So it underpins the function of every Everything organ. we have then, everything. Everything we have. Is Each affected is in every single Each. thing. So As why we get dry eyes, dry eyes, hearing tinnitus. issues. I I got tinnitus. I've talked about yep. this before. Uh, I don't get it now. I've got my estrogen back. Dry yes, mouth, mask like face. Um, often very dry strange skin. sort of feelings, like a vice around your face. Wow. Facial pain, teeth, um, gum recession, burning mouth syndrome, dry mouth. Uh, palpitations due to the lack of um, the, the electrical activity um, is, is, is not carefully regulated without estrogen. So we get palpitations, which are very frightening and, yeah. and 
disturbing. Yeah, and, and you, you think it's a panic attack. Mm. I remember uh, yeah. Oprah Winfrey talked about it. She said that she thought, yeah. you know, she, and she saw every heart specialist in, in the States. Obviously, she's got access to anybody she wants to see. Right, yeah. And it was hooked up to all these gadgets, and they couldn't find anything wrong with her heart at all. Yeah. And then she yeah. interviewed a menopause specialist on her show who mentioned... Yeah palpitations as an effect of, of menopause and she said what yeah. palpitations because of I've lost my estrogen and she said well yeah it's really common yeah, yeah exactly. replaced her and estrogen and she's all become these, evangelical these about it thankfully yeah and all these secondary care physicians that she saw top of the game probably being being who she is didn't mention hormones once I, I, I wouldn't imagine this we we problem. need to get everyone joined up don't we so we need to Absolutely. make psychiatrists Absolutely. and mental health practitioners far more aware that yeah. if they are presented with a woman, you know, 40s onwards, experiencing yeah. anxiety, low mood, depression, possibly yeah. worse, mm, OCD, mm. and, you know, what do you think, eating disorders? I mean, would that come into it as well? Yes. Oh, yes, it does, yeah. It could completely, especially if there's been a history before of, of eating disorders, they quite often research wow. the, to the surface because as a result of the anxiety, the, the feeling vulnerable again, um, it, it easily can be, people can slip back. Um, it, I think almost every, not just psychiatrists, rheumatologists. Well, I was going to say, things, yeah, yeah. Neuro, neurologists for tingling, burning, wondering if they've got yeah, something pelvic like floor. Pets. I mean, you know, urologists, gynecologists. I'm, I'm actually yeah. speaking yeah. Um, at a webinar. I've been invited. The Royal College of Obstetricians yes. and Gynecologists yes. have uh, yes. have invited me to oh, speak good. Uh, good. this week. Um, and I'm going to be talking about a few things. I'm not sure if they're going to love my presence, actually, but at the end of it, Good. don't well, tell them. OK, don't no. tell them. <laughs> I'm, I might get disinvited. Um, but no, I mean, there are there are some Good. home truths that, you know, because I've been in touch with gynecologists before. And, and this is where women get referred to a gynecologist. Yeah. And they will say things like, well, why do you want testosterone, for example? Um, it's not a female hormone. And you think, well hold on a minute, we make four times more testosterone in our ovaries than we do oestrogen. Mm. How come mm. I know that and you don't and you're a consultant gynaecologist? That, Absolutely. I mean, where is the training? This is, this yeah. is really quite terrifying it's when, when it's, your patient it, it, knows a load more than you do. It's woeful um, and it's across the woeful. board. Woeful, that is a great word, woeful. Um, I have yeah. a feeling I might be using that on Wednesday. Good, yes, you use it because it's across the board and some brilliant people, of course, everywhere. Of course, um, there are, of course. Uh, I mean, we're not, uh, you know, like there are some brilliant GPs. Oh, yeah. Oh, my oh, goodness, yes. I'm so not into GP bashing. GPs are, you know. Completely, completely agree. Absolutely. But we just need but to support the GPs support. by giving them the information. Absolutely. We need to have solutions, don't we, Liz? I mean, no. Yeah. We need to say, right, this is a problem because society yeah. has neglected menopause for eons. Um, <laughs> now we're talking about it. We're, we're, we're doing something about it. Make menopause. I had mine on this morning. Did actually. you? Yeah, I've had some yes, comments on Instagram saying you should wear your T-shirt, Liz. Yeah. Okay. I will. I will. I will wear it. I will wear it on Wednesday. I need to get That's it tailored. Right. I feel it's a bit baggy. I might no, get it very... tailored and maybe just kind of adjust the collar slightly. <laughs> you know, I, could, I might have to remodel it. <laughs> Put some pearls on or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> No, absolutely. It's times of change. This is the time to jump on and make those changes. Yeah. Um, and education. It's all about education of women, the workplace, the medical profession. The whole of society needs needs help and support. And that's well, of course, one of the great things that the menopause charity did, which launched this year, was to make the free training available, the confidence in menopause prescribing, to every GP practice and any health practitioner. Yeah. Can, can you talk yeah. a little bit about that? Because if anybody's not yeah. aware of this, you need to let your medical practitioners know about this. Oh, please, yeah. Um, I was part of the team who, who devised the course, and it's, a, it's lectures and videos of, of consultations with actresses. Um, and it's free to any healthcare professional. Um, that was the menopause charities. That's here, nurses, like. That's physios, nurses, GPs, pharmacists, pharmacists yeah. anybody. Yeah, yeah. And it's really, you know, it's a good course, it's practical, it's pragmatic, how to prescribe HRT, how safe HRT is, yeah. um, it, you know, it just really is a great toolkit for anyone who sees... How long is the course? Case. Well, it, you can do it in bits, that's the good thing, the mm -hmm. module, that's modular, so you can select, but really, you know, in, in a day, you could cover the majority of it. Um, mm -hmm. 
so it's it's you know over a couple of days the whole or well, you could break it down do you know you an, an hour it down, and it's 14 pieces. fish isn't it who did it and they are nhs accredited they're proper Absolutely, yes, they're training proper i mean gps train all the time they retrain in asthma and diabetes and all that's these sort right. of updates so you know that they're, they're used right. to logging on to 14 fish aren't they and they are and, and training. Yes, it's a really good platform lots of education there but the menopause is, is free for, for so if we have a health care. professional in mind that we might want to pass this on to or, or just let our gp practice or surgery Please. know how would they find it well they just go on to 14 fish and tap in uh, confidence in menopause that's the fish. course and, and that's they don't have to pay for it it's it's free um, so yes, just please highlight that to your own. And approach. I think that is global, isn't it? Didn't I hear yes. from Louise that you've opened it up to anybody anywhere in the world, which is extraordinary. Yeah. I mean, the generosity yeah. of you guys, unpaid. Oh, it's important. It's, it's so important, isn't it? It's, it the, the, the solutions. It's it's you know we can stand and we can say this is a problem, this is a problem, but there's no point just saying that. No, there's We've no got point. To get solutions for yeah. it, and and yeah. this is one of one of those. And Louise is brilliant at sort of devising these solutions the balance app is another solution but yeah. it's free for women to help them guide them yeah. in making that so you've diagnosis. got free material educating yeah. medics and free mm. material educating women and hopefully that the two will then join yeah and society absolutely. will and be and transformed yeah and the workplace as well needs to be transformed the workplace. um and so let, let's move on. I, I know there's been so much chat about about symptoms, and you know there are so many symptoms. And you know I've recorded yeah. so many podcasts and things on YouTube. Please do go and take a look if you, if you'd like to have a deep dive today, especially or in the coming weeks. What about taking HRT for all women prophylactically? Because we know it cuts rates of heart disease. It's being linked to reduced rates of Alzheimer's currently being explored, lower rates of diabetes, cutting rates of colon cancer, you know, all of these things. You know, what is the view going forward? Do you think we'll find a day when you kind of get to your 45th birthday and your GP will say, right, there you go. You need a bit more estrogen. Off you go, love. You know, I, see, right. see you I, in 20 years time when you're not going to bother me because you're all sorted with everything else. Yeah, well, well, this is my, that, that's our goal, really, that we we sort of um, seamlessly travel from pre-menopause to menopause, like much like the antenatal system, actually, antenatal care system. When you're pregnant, there's a system in place to look yeah. after you and the baby and monitor. And, and the same when a woman reaches menopause, at whatever age that is, it could be younger, as we've discussed. But, you know, then immediately the discussion is then, how are we going to help you with your symptoms yeah. and your, your future health? So I think we have to almost sometimes ask, why aren't you taking HRT? It's yeah. completely up to the woman. Isn't it's, that so it, interesting? It's, Reverse yeah. that. Why aren't you on it? Almost to a certain extent, um, you could argue that. But and I, of course, it's up to the up to women. Women need is. to have an informed decision, you know, mm. choice. Informed choice is all well, about. Well, that's that's uh, what the NHS uh, nice guidelines updated. What was it? Was absolutely. it uh, a, a joint decision making? What was the word? That's it. Shared care decision making. Shared care decision making. Yeah, informed that's the, that's decision. now in the nice guidelines. So whatever you're talking about, it's, you know, whatever shared, you're talking about, shared whatever care. Treatment. And that means what? That people. patients have personal responsibility to be able to say, I'm making this decision, it's my body, it's my health, it's my choice. Yes, it is. It is. So it, it's giving the right information about the pros and the cons of a medication or an intervention mm -hmm. and then thinking, tailoring it almost to the individual because other people have different backgrounds, different pro things going on in their lives and, and a, a side effect to them may be devastating but for another person it's not a problem and so we'll have different choices as a result of that of who we are it's about the yeah. individual and giving them balanced evidence-based information so that they can make their choice which may not be the same as the doctor's choice but it is a reasonable um you know, choice, choice, of course, for, for, for the person. I, I hear so many women saying, I'm not allowed, I can't. That's a nonsense. It is a nonsense. You know, we could say, right, you, no one's allowed to do bungee jumping. No one's allowed to do cross-country <laughs> riding because there's a risk. Of course there's a risk. Um, but no one's allowed to drive a car. Not allowed Very to drive dangerous. a car. There's yeah. no such thing as can't yeah. and shouldn't. Mm. It's about, well, if I do this, there are risks. And I need to know what those risks are. If yeah, I but you know, but when you talk risks. about risk, I mean, if you're talking about things like mm. cancer risk, you know, mm. we are far more at risk of something like breast cancer as women if we're overweight. 
Oh yes, completely. For massive me. risk, risk. Massive yeah. breast cancer risk. Why is that not being shouted from the rooftops? Absolutely. Why is Absolutely. that? You know, why do I walk in? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm really on my soapbox now. Oh, oh, good. I travelled recently through an airport, and the amount of junk that was on offer was unbelievable. Huge, you know, value packs. Hello, value. What yeah. a misnomer that is. This size, you know, buy yeah. two for ten pounds. Buy, you know, three packs of these, you know, whatever they were, and you know, Pringles or you know, some sort of rubbish, and and get two more free. I mean, it, it's just extraordinary how we are being. And you go into hospitals, vending machines. Hello, have you had a look at what they sell in those vending machines? You cannot get okay. anything that is not massively going to speak, spike your insulin or cause weight gain. And what is causing the majority? of our yeah. obesity and you know yeah. heart disease diabetes yeah. all of that yeah, metabolic syndrome right. putting people in intensive care you know let's look at the bmis of people in intensive care you know this stuff it's a killer i know and no what, one's talking about it and instead what? they're banging women over the head saying oh well you can't have your hormones back you know no i know that it might make you feel really it's shocking awful. and destroy your life but a little bit of your natural hormone back no no that's going to be really dangerous i, I mean know. how dare they I know, where where I, is the proportionate risk here? Sorry, I've really kicked I, off on a Monday now. No, you're ab absolutely <laughs> right. It's completely, completely... It's bonkers. It's bonkers. Literally, I mean, somebody landing from mm. planet wherever would come down and they go, uh, sorry, you, you do what to your bodies? They give you uh, what? They, they tell you uh, to eat this and then they don't... What? I, 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 I genuinely I, think that my, hopefully, yeah. my daughters and certainly their daughters, because I have to remember Lily's now 30, yeah. you know, will look back and they'll say, well, what, what do you mean they didn't give you any of your hormones back? I know. What, what, what do you mean you had to survive without your estrogen? Well, how on earth what, did you do that? I, I completely, completely. And, and, you know, the whole thing is that there aren't any risks, really, at all from, from treatments. The risks are minuscule, if they're at all, for the majority of people. Obviously, everyone's individual. We have to take it on an yeah. individual case. But, you know, it's so safe and so beneficial for women. Um, that's just completely got lost. But I think we're changing that. I think the message is getting out there. Now. I think it um, is. And I'm certainly more confident about talking about it. You know, even, mm -hmm. you know, I feel, to be really honest with you, you know, maybe this is a bit of oversharing here, but, you know, as a relatively newly single woman, uh, you know, and kind of thinking about my life going forward, you know, being yeah. known as a menopause campaigner, yeah. you know, I was kind of thinking, mm, I'm not sure that's entirely kind of, you know, kind of what I want to hang my hat on or, or, or be known for. But do you yeah. know what? I, I just feel so much more comfortable now talking about yeah. it. There is this real sisterhood. You know, you've got great yes. women, people like Davina and Lorraine yes. Kelly and, you know, Zoe Ball and, you know, really, you know, lovely, glamorous women. Yeah. Um, who you kind of identify with, who go, oh, actually, you know, well, if they're talking about it, then it's okay. And I think we've just got to put it out there, haven't we? And and just be be part of the change, you know, to pardon well, well, the pun. Yeah, well, thanks to people like you, the public face, you know, the, the, we are rebranding the menopause. Yeah. You know, the menopause is, can be sexy, can be beautiful. Is 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 a, is a well, if you get job. it right, you come through it, and you know, you've got the liberation, no more periods. You know, you're not going to have any more kids. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. you kind of got to a stage in life where hopefully you know, you know your own mind, you know where you are in the world, you've got your group of friends and you know kind of, you know, how you want to dress and it's not actually a white baggy t-shirt, but never mind. Um, <laughs> yes. And, you know, yeah. you know, you know kind of where your life is going, hopefully, yeah, yeah. And, and then you can move forward with this sense of joy and... And all the yes, other things. Exactly. It's exciting times. We've got 30 years ahead of us. You know, we can yeah. go for that promotion. We can start a oh, new yeah, business. Man. We can do everything, really. Yeah. If, if, we, if our hormones are, are, are helping us, really. Um, yeah. And it's, yes, I think, I think it's, it's, it's the next phase of life, which I think should be greeted with huge excitement. And well, I, you know, I am totally, you know, my, my remit, I think, since starting my magazine, Wellbeing Magazine, and, you know, really focusing on that, it, it's just become such a heartland of help, advice, information, inspiration, hopefully, for midlife women, who I think have been marginalised for way too long. You know, we bring up our kids, we look up after older relations uh, and, and kind of we get sandwiched in the middle. And then uh, when all this happens, our hormones let us down, our healthcare providers almost seem to conspire against us in some cases, not all, of course, there are some notable exceptions. But we just need to go, actually, I, this is, you know, I'm, 
I'm not going to take it anymore. You know, I'm, I'm, but what, what was that film? You have to remind me where, where that's that fi famous line. The guy stands up and he says, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. And it became oh. this kind of this anthem. Yes, um, that's I can't remember. If anybody that's... remembers it, pop it on, pop it on Instagram and I'll, uh, I'll be able to be reminded. That's, but that's, that's exactly right. We need but... to be enraged, don't we? We need to be not, yeah, not, exactly. not taking this actually anymore. But it's hard when you when you have some for some people when they're you're, just feeling so exhausted they're ground down you're not sleeping so you're feeling anxious sleeping. weepy vulnerable you go to it's, your gp you, you finally pluck up courage and if you don't get that sympathy there you go thank you it was peter finch network movie thank you very much there we are <laughs> <laughs> someone has the answer there That's great. righteous <laughs> anger says tracy yeah absolutely yes. righteous anger yeah. and it helps doesn't yeah. it i mean what happens i mean presumably the time women and get to see you many of them I know are kind of at their wits end but does it help to, to write things down before your GP appointment do you take somebody yeah, with you pre preparation is key here especially general practice is so so busy now and, yeah. and it's very difficult for GPs I know but I think I would always advocate downloading the free balance app because it's free um, you can track your symptoms there it can give you a diagnosis, really, of, of menopause and perimenopause. Um, it da you can download a health report that you take to your GP. So immediately, when Wait, you, you time limited, present them with the report. Exactly. So the conversation is immediately about hormones um, yeah. and the lack of. Um, and this is why I've got these symptoms. Look here. And, and then, then GP yeah. would go, oh, right, OK. That's quite, for me as a GP, I find that very, very helpful. Great. Um, well, it's been written but, by GPs for GPs, so exactly, that that is the great thing, isn't it? Exactly, because otherwise people are so conscious of time, they're very respectful, just they think, just say one symptom for one appointment. Um, yeah. As we know, there's a myriad of symptoms. Yeah, so I many hundreds of symptoms, and I know there's comments here saying that you can't get to see a GP. Well, hopefully that is coming back yeah. into play now but you can always yeah. download that you can always email it ahead of your appointment you can email it you could and then have a telephone consultation and say so right i hope you've received my exam. email this is the report let's talk about it let's go through it absolutely on a, as a telephone that would be fine um oh, i've just seen somebody else always... saying dr louise's book is 99p on amazon today oh, go yes, louise that's, <laughs> that's great that's good. that's good well i hope she far outsells mine because she's got a cracking book there so <laughs> I wish I lots of luck with that. Yeah, you see, just just different resources for different people. Having multiple resources, hearing the same message from different voices is really important. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness, we've got so many questions and I know we're going to have to go. Um, it's just, you know, achy joints, mood, temper, brain fog, just not feeling like me. You know, these are all, you know, absolute symptoms, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Completely. What what can people find on the Balance app? Because that does seem to be... Is it somewhere where you can have questions answered? How does it work? Can you talk us through yeah, it? Yeah, so there's a community which women find quite supportive to, to talk about their symptoms or talk about what's worked well for them, what, those, what talk about their types of HRT they're on. Um, there's also access to experts about um, eating, um, uh, good diet, low sugar. Um, there are people who can be encouraged to take um, little experiments to try and cut down their sugar in their diet right. or increase their exercise. Yeah. There are exercise specialists, uh, personal trainers there, yoga specialists as well that um, can, can answer questions and give information about yoga. Um, and looking yeah. at it as a holistic Yeah, exactly. It's not just hormones. Not That's just obviously hormones. the most fundamental part. But Absolutely. there are other but things as well. There are mm -hmm. other things. There's no point just taking hormones and doing nothing else. No, You've that's really not, no, no. But you, once you get your hormones back, you feel like exercising. You, you, you know, you have your like mojo exercise. back. You want to, you know, eat better and cut the carbs and do all of that. Yeah, in my absolutely. experience, and I'm, that's, you know. that's exactly right. Your muscles and joints don't ache, so you are able to exercise. Yeah. The motivation's there. Yeah. So it, it has access to all the, these sort of things, um, um, and it's free. So and it's evidence based. There's no pharma funding. Um, so what, no. you, what you is truth, and um, that's that's important. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Amazing. And that's just on the app store, isn't it? People asking yes, about it. it. Balance yeah. menopause. Yeah. 
amazing. <laughs> Share it far and wide with all your girlfriends. <laughs> I'm going to have to let you go, but thank you so much yeah. for being with us. It's so it's lovely, lovely to, to see your gorgeous face again. And oh, I hope that everything is, I know the Newson Clinic is, is so busy. You don't want to be busy, do you? You want actually to no, have no, we no want, patients. We want people to get the free uh, free care from the, from the NHS, yeah. really. That's our yeah. resolve. Yes, it. the Confidence in Menopause course is available for physios. Yep. Absolutely. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, it Go is. and have a look at the. So, if you do balance, uh, what is it? Balance Menopause website now as well. Yes, it is. Yeah, Balance Menopause website. Balance Menopause what? Dot co. Uk or. Yes. Dot co. Uk. Yes. Yeah. If, if you even did the Menopause Doctor, it will take you over there. Menopause so Doctor or Balance Menopause. Well, I'll make sure that we put links up to UK. those. And Thank I will you. be very active on my Instagram stories later on today with all sorts of links. I know there's so much going on. I think we're just flooding the gram I know, with menopause. I know. It's amazing. But it's great. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really different um, place we're in, even from two years ago, which is so encouraging. Yeah. Yeah, um, so it's it. a wonderful menopause family I think we have here that we're all helping yeah. um, in, in, in different areas, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, and let's not forget the importance of oestrogen for our immune system. At a time particularly when, yeah. you know, many of yeah. us are so, you know, nervous and concerned mm -hmm. about support for our immune systems, getting through the winter in the healthiest Indeed. way. Oestrogen is a key part of that. Indeed it is. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. Positive stuff. Thank you so much. You know, to celebrate, I have made you a cake. Oh. I'm very sorry that you're not here to enjoy it personally. <laughs> I have cut you a slice. I baked oh, I it this it. morning. It's my menopause cake. Oh, beautiful. And it's oh, got that's... lots of um, stem ginger. I made it with soya flour and phytoestrogens. Oh. And, oh, and actually, lovely. you know, it's not going to sort out your hot flushes, but it starts the conversation. If you make this and take it to girlfriends or family and they say, oh, what's that? You go, well, it's Liz's menopause cake. It just opens up the chat, doesn't it? Lovely. Looks delicious. <laughs> I would offer to send you some, but I'm not sure it will survive the post. <laughs> Have a really great day. I know it's a busy day for you. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for asking Thank me. You. Pleasure. Big kiss. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. You're going to have to leave me, because if I click, then I click everybody off. Um, yeah, so my menopause cake. Why don't you make it? Make it today. Go get the ingredients. The free recipes up on lizardwellbeing.com. It actually came out of my menopause um, guide. I'm very tempted. In fact, I am going to have a piece. Mm. Oh, love it. I make this, give it to my boys, they don't grow breasts or anything, it's not not that way inclined. Um, it tastes delicious, it's really kind of spicy, got ginger and all sorts of good things in here, linseeds, it's really filling. So I slice it and then I, um, yeah, would you like some? Mm. Um, and then I freeze it and then I just take slices out of the freezer to either have you know, spread with a bit of butter perhaps in the afternoon or I toast it in the morning sometimes if I'm doing the school run and just need to kind of grab something shove a piece in the toaster and then take it with me um, so mm, I think I've got a bit of raisin stuck in my teeth anyway there we go oh I do love Rebecca I do love all these medics you know I have to say I am so impressed by the number of GPs and medics you know like Dr Lewis who just give up their time tirelessly I hope you heard my podcast that went live last Friday with Dr. Radhika Vora, another one of my favourite people, and we were talking about testosterone particularly. I know there's been some chat. I didn't really touch on that. Um, but uh, yeah, if you'd like to know a little bit more about testosterone, how to reclaim it, it's a female missing hormone. Don't forget, we make four times more testosterone in our bodies than we do oestrogen in our ovaries. Um, so it's really important. You know, people think it's just for sex drive and libido. Uh, but it's also about brain health, cognitive function, memory, brain fog, muscle strength, muscle mass. So all of that really important as we age. Um, I should say that there's a really good resource with Bupa. And yeah, I know you have to pay for it, but it's actually really good. If all else fails, I think what they're doing is very good. The Bupa doctors have been trained by Louise Newson and team. So they've all had proper evidence-based menopause training. And I think from memory, it's £250. And that's for a whole year's worth of care. You get a one-to-one, -one, either online, I think, or face-to-face -face with a proper doctor for like half an hour to go through everything. They can prescribe HRT if you want it or not. You know, they can talk you through all the options. 
uh, then I think you get a follow-up about three months later because HRT can take months to tweak to get right. One size doesn't fit all, definitely. You need different types and doses and all of that. And then I think for a year, you get free access to their helpline. So you can call at any time. And I think actually it's a really good deal. So, you know, if all else fails uh, and the NHS is not able to provide for you, then that could be an option to look at. Um, a couple of things that I've got... Uh, obviously, there's our Wellbeing magazine. We talk a lot about menopause and a lot about all sorts of things. We do have, um, I think, we've got some subscription gifts still left um, if you would like to subscribe. Yeah, you get six issues for the price of five. Just head over to the website to have a look at that. There is on the website, lizardwellbeing.com, there is a free menopause tracker. So you can download that, it's really simple. You can download it, print it off. You can take that to your doctor if you would like to, or just keep a track for yourself. Do that alongside the Balance app, obviously. Um, we have got, uh, there is an Optibac offer. Okay, so this is, I talked about this. This just runs until the end of October, so don't miss this. Um, so Optibac, this is for women. I talked about this before. This has got two specific strains of beneficial bacteria. The very specific version, RC14, which is the name of um, the Ruterite bacteria, and the Rhamnosus bacteria strain, GR1. I had to look that up because it's very specific. These are the two strains of bacteria clinically proven to reach the vaginal area intact and help with things like bladder sensitivity, um, any kind of upset. So UTIs, recurrent UTIs, cystitis, bacterial vaginosis, all that kind of thing. You know, I absolutely swear by this. Okay, this is not an ad. They're not paying me to say this. I have bought Optibac for women for years. Um, I have restocked recently because there's a 20% Liz Loves. It's an affiliate discount code. So if you just put in Liz Loves, all in capitals, um, Lainey, I think, will pop a link up on Facebook, but you can just nip onto the Optibac website and find it. It doesn't apply to their other probiotics, unfortunately. It is just the one for women, the purple one, but I do rate that very much. And talking about discounts, by the way, just not to miss, I know lots of you are loving Beauty Pie. I did have somewhere here in my study, a huge box, one of those lovely big pink boxes um, with all my beauty pie things in. This is one of my favourites. I use Super Retinol. That's the one that I use. Uh, and they have also given us a discount. So they have an amazing deal. That's the subscription model. It's normally £59 for the year and then you can buy everything at cost price. Such a good deal. This is one of the things actually that I've had going. They're beautiful candles. Oh, I love that so much. This one I think is the Freesia. Yeah, it's just, I think it's 60 hours of burning time. Amazing. Oh, I could just sit and smell that all day. Anyway, it's normally £59 for the whole year. If you use Liz Loves as a member, you sign up and it's just 49 It's at Knox, £10 off the price. So that is definitely worth having. Um, and the last one to mention is the Real Flower Company. I actually put a post on my Instagram because they sent me these beautiful flowers. So I wanted to say thank you. So these are farm fresh seasonal flowers. They're all grown in the UK, They're grown in Hampshire. Rosa B. Morton, who I've met several times, you may have seen, I did a little film on ITV on this morning with her. Um, I've podcasted with her. She's a great, great woman. And so we've got dahlias and we've got all sorts of lovely berries and just, just beautiful things. There's herbs in here. Look, they've got rosemary. They've got hydrangeas. Really, really lovely. I think the farm box, I think, is £28 to have that delivered. And she has given us a discount as well. So Liz loves, again, it's the code. And that's just until the end of the month. That gives you 10% off. Lovely things, actually. Beautiful flowers for yourself or if you want to send somebody some beautiful flowers, then that is good. I'm going to love you and leave you now. Just to say that I'm going to be back live on Wednesday. And we are doing a little bit more on menopause because it is, you know, World Menopause Day. I'm sure we can extend that into World Menopause Awareness Month, don't you think? And I'm going to be talking to our lovely friends up in the Outer Hebrides, Weed and Wonderful, Dr. Seaweed. Well, what has seaweed got to do with menopause, you might ask? Well, 
I'm not going to tell you. You're going to have to wait until Wednesday and then you can tune in. But yeah, I've got lots of great things, actually, just looking at the schedule here for Wednesday. So I hope that you will catch me then. And my guest is going to be Craig Rose, who is the founder of Weed and Wonderful, otherwise known as Dr. Seaweed. Lots and lots and lots going on. Don't forget, I have got some downloads if you want to... Um, learn a bit more there's the truth about menopause that was one of my downloads i wrote quite a long time ago it's quite straightforward if you don't know much about it that's a good starting point this one is i've just printed this out so you can see it the truth about hrt this is focused on hrt so if you want a deep dive into that and what i like about these downloads i mean i've just printed them just to show you but uh, is they have clickable links so links to podcasts like the one with Dr. Rebecca Lewis, links to you know supplements, links to reading material, links to articles, nice guidelines, all of that. It's all clickable. So I think having for a subject like this to have something on a download that you can read perhaps on your laptop or a tablet or you know whatever, I think is useful. Anyway, thank you so much. Thank you for all your comments. It's been a very lively, lively discussion and thank you for being part of it. Thank you very much for all your chat. Ducks of Deb says, Liz's menopause book is brilliant. I got that for Christmas last year from my daughter. Oh, that's so nice. You see, I think books are such a great thing because they are, A, their reference. You can keep and you can come back and look at them time and time again. But it just breaks the ice and, you know, you can give it almost kind of jokingly. You can say, oh, ha ha, I thought you might like to have a look at this, ha ha. But actually, underneath it is a really important message that we need to get out there and share. A bit like baking the menopause cake. You know, it's a bit of fun, but it does have a serious message behind it. So let's go. Please sign the petition. Head to Make Menopause Matter online. Sign the petition. We need to get this debated in Parliament. We need to get some action here so that more and more women can be helped. And then we can just put it to one side and get on with the rest of our lives, please. Anyway, I'm going to stop now. I'm going to step down from my soapbox. Thank you for bearing with me. I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Thank you. Thanks for all your lovely words. Bye-bye. <laughs>